All right, welcome back everybody. I'm gonna do an armory chat here today. Something uh, we haven't done in a while, but we've got construction on a range and it's kind of busy and can't really go out there and shoot too much. And I wanted to talk about a gun that we've actually been on the hunt for for a very, very long time. This is colloquially known, colloquially, quickly, This is known as a Red 9. Some people may call it a C96. Now, these are not that uncommon. Uh, it's my understanding that actually, not even counting Astra and some of the companies that copied these things or knocked them off, that Mauser made possibly two million of these guns. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot. I mean, so these are not uncommon, but not all of those two million guns are in the United States. And so most of the viewers here um, are going to be in the U.S., so keep that in mind as far as relative scarcity, value, and collectability. So, <clears throat> a couple points, I guess particular points about this gun. This is a, uh, as I said, C96 a broom handle Mauser, hence the name broom handle. Um, this one is in 9mm. I believe it's been converted. Uh, probably not originally made as a 9mm, but... Um, the, the telltale signs of that are um, it's got some Chinese markings on it. So right here, if you can get this on video, you'll see like an electric pencil mark there. It looks like dot matrix printing, it's, uh, but it's apparently it's an old Chinese mark. And then down here at the bottom of the uh, outside the magazine, there's another barely discernible dot matrix looking like electric pencil Chinese character. Many of you ask, is this a Chinese copy or is this a real Mauser? Um, you can tell by looking at, you know, at the quality of the, uh, of the logo. Let's see, get it on film there. And the quality of the, the marking struck on the other side that this is a real German Mauser. Um, it's even got um, Imperial German marks on it. There's one there on the hammer. And uh, da, da, da. there's one up here. Uh, I guess kind of like at the uh, rear of the barrel, and there's even a maker's mark. Let's see here, uh, Waffenbrock Mauser Opendorf there on top of the uh, on top of the barrel. But a lot of these guns, they bring too much money, at least for what we were looking to pay. But what made this gun special is it wasn't desirable to the collectors. Let me explain. Strike number one. It's a quote Chinese Mauser. So. That kind of confused people. Some people were thinking, well, is it a Chinese copy or is it a gun that was brought in from China and, had, and it was shot to pieces because those guns were known for being, you know, road hard and put up wet. The second thing that hurt this gun is the, um, is the fact that it's been refinished. So somebody made this a project gun. It probably looked pretty rough, maybe being imported in the U.S. And, and they refinished it. Now, I don't think it looks bad at all. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not the, the destroyed gun, but for the collectors looking to pay collector's prices, a refinish is a negative. The other, the other thing, and I haven't quite, let me see here, 9951, let's check serial numbers. The auction house, okay, so the auction house indicated that this has a non-matching bolt. Um, the best way I can really tell that right here is there's a serial number here on the back of the um, back of the upper part of the receiver. And then this is the bolt. The last four digits of the serial number they're not they're not matching. So this gun for you know for the rarefied air of the high end Mauser collector German gun community, this gun stinks to high heaven. So we got it for. A steel and um, I've been trying to get one of these for a steel for a while and so when you when you factor in all that and then it's also a nine millimeter and there's some question as to whether you know did somebody they just bore out the chamber to make it into uh, you know nine millimeter or did they bore out the whole thing because but you know is you know is this barrel basically like a you know like a gutter pipe and so looking at the barrel and the lands and grooves it it looks fine. It shoots fine. It, it does chamber nine millimeter, and you know it. It you know works simply, you know, as it should. So, but for us, 
We wanted one of these guns because they're pretty unique guns. I mean, you know, Han Solo. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. They're, they're just a very unique gun as far as, you know, anything that's made today. But we wanted one that was shooter grade. We wanted one that, you know, if we scratch it up, use it as a reference gun, take it out, you know, to demo or, or do whatever we want to do with it, it you know, we're not going to lose 30 or 40% of the value if, you know, it gets dropped or, you know, let's say it even suffers a catastrophic failure and we have to get it repaired or get parts replaced on it. It's already had parts replaced on it. It has a non-matching bolt. So, for again, again, for us, this was a home run buy and it took us years to find this gun. Now, I'm making that point to make this point. Yeah, there were two million of these guns made. And yeah, there are... a most every other broom handle Mauser made on the open market is more valuable than this Mauser. But they're not making these anymore. Nobody could afford to make these anymore. And if they did make them, they would be so expensive that, I mean, it would be a commercial failure. I mean, we've all seen what happens when various boutique gun manufacturers decide to try to repop a, an old gun and, you know, the engineering and the blueprints and the you know, and the tolerances and then the financing to make it all work, they usually, it's just a failure as a, as a, as, you know, as a business. So what I'm trying to say is the value of these guns is going to go nowhere but up. And while this gun is a turd to the community today, long term, even though it's refinished, even though it's Chinese, even though maybe it's been caliber converted, 20 years from now, this is going to be a 9mm Red 9 C96. And while maybe the cherry ones will be worth 10 times what this is worth, this is going to be worth significantly more than what we paid for today. Now, I'm not going to go into exactly what that is, but it was more than $1,000 and well, well, well under $2,000. Like well under like basically functionally a thousand dollars so you know but it's not just a gun it comes with a reproduction reproduction stock and holster and i guess there's a cleaning rod in it um the gun does use stripper clips and did not come with any stripper clips we have some of those on order they actually should be in today so you know we'll go ahead and uh uh, you know, maybe get that on video and, and demonstrate how all that works. You know, there's the stripper clip guy there in the top. Right now, how we load it is we have to hold the bolt back and then thumb in, thumb them in a couple at a time. And, you know, basically that's how you get the bolt to close because you uh, have to push the follower down. And that's how you, that's how you operate it. So reproduction uh, holster, reproduction stock, which, again, for our purposes, cherry gun, Cherry, you know, original gun, unmolested, original holster, unmolested, original stock, unmolested, for us, that would be terrible. I mean, what if we crack it or broke it or shattered it or it dried up and blew away into, into sawdust? I mean, it's, it's not about what, you know, what something's worth. It's about the application that you're trying to use it for. We are a, you know, we are a functional armory with a reference collection that is used and so, you know, a gun that basically gets the, you know, gets the job done, but is, you know, it's not a mint if something goes wrong with it, you know, that's a home run for us. Also, in case you're uh, curious, now, unless I'm wrong on this, I believe I was told this, this gun, because of its age, is grandfathered, uh, to be able, you can put a stock on it and not have to have this registered as a uh, short-barreled rifle, SBR. And even though the um, even though the uh, the stock is reproduction, um, my understanding is, unless the ATF, well, well, we talk to the ATF fairly regularly. If I'm making a mistake now in video, I'm going to hear about it pretty soon. But you should be able an original gun that's of the right age, even if. You know, you got to get a reproduction stock. You can legally put a stock on these guns they're grandfathered in. So that's kind of cool. So if you want to experience a, you know, a, a SBR type gun, you know, you don't have to do the tax stamp paperwork and, and, you know, all that. You can just go ahead and stick one on there. 
Now, looking at this stock, let's see here. The, the, the holster is obviously, the, or the, the, the stock is obviously reproduction, but I'm looking at this hardware right here, and I actually am suspicious that this hardware may be original. I don't think, I don't think that is, um, I don't think that is, um, that's reproduction, but you never know, you know, especially, I mean, how that probably came out of China. As a matter of fact, it's got a serial number on it. Let's see if it, uh, 7592, 5593. Nope. So I now have three non-matching numbers. So the stock doesn't match, the bolt doesn't match, and the receiver doesn't match. So, you know, again, flaming turd for the collectors for the John 1911 Armory. Great home run. So let's see here. Anything else? Oh, somebody's going to, uh, somebody's going to want to ask, um, how are the sights? Uh, it is a, it's a leaf spring and... Uh, with a slider, and it starts at 50 yards, 50 maybe it's meters, may have probably meters, and goes out to 1,000 yards. So good luck with that. Um, you know, probably you'd be lucky to, you know, maybe get it to 300, and you even then do a little, you know, do a little mortar shooting. Um, I can shoot a, I can shoot my VP9 nine millimeter at 200 yards on a man-sized target and connect if I'm, you know, if I'm warmed up and. I can usually do it in like two shots, one shot correction. I'd be curious to see, you know, maybe, you know, we figure out some of the stuff on this gun. You know, maybe I can connect with it at 200 yards. I mean, I'm not going to try to, you know, make any promises. Now, I don't know this for as a for a fact. We've only probably put Officer Mike have, 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 and I have had this gun out, not on video. We've put maybe 15 rounds through it just to really confirm that it functions, nothing breaks on it, and it actually it chambers and cycles and functions at true nine millimeter. Because other than these grips right here, as far as I can tell, there's no real markings on it saying it is a nine millimeter Luger, but it is, it was checked out by the auction house. But um, Freeze is telling me that these guns are not good to dry fire. Supposedly you can break the firing pins in them. I will take that at face value. I assume that's probably true. He knows what he's talking about. He's had these back in the old days. So if you are thinking about getting one of these and you want to uh, dry fire it or, uh, you know, practice with it, you can, um, you know, put a snap cap in it and do what you want to do, you know, with all that. So um, for any of you that are going to ask, no, we will be not keep converting this to a hand solo Star Wars blaster. <laughs> I would have to find a C96 or Red 9 that is like totally gassed up and, uh, you know, do that to be a hand solo gun, but that's probably not going to be something that I ever do. Well, that's going to wrap it up. If you want to see more photographs or videos of us shooting this gun and shaking it down and figuring it out, go to our website, john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day.